you should have a good reason behind every trade. Today I'm sharing several key points that you must add in your trading checklist. Use it every time you want to enter a trade and you'll see a dramatic decrease in the amount of unforced errors that you make during the execution process. So if you could, like, subscribe to the channel and stick around for the full video. Market trends have a repeating pattern of a strong impulsive wave in the trending direction, then a smaller pullback against the impulsive wave, followed by another impulsive wave. Your job is to isolate the most recent strong impulsive wave to determine the trend. Also, you need to spot corrections in the trend, because these are the pullbacks that are going to provide an opportunity to enter into the trend direction and you want to pull the trigger on a trade when there is enough evidence to suggest the pullback is ending and another impulse is beginning. So the first step is to know the dominant market trend. An uptrend occurs when the price movement is making higher swing lows and higher swing highs. This is telling you that the waves in the trending direction, what we call impulses, must be bigger than the corrections. If a correction is bigger than an impulse, it violates the higher swing low rule, thus the uptrend is in jeopardy. Downtrends occur when the price is making lower swing highs and lower swing lows. Therefore, the impulses to the downside must be larger than the corrections higher. If a correction is bigger than the last impulse, it violates the lower swing high rule. At all times, you must know in which direction the impulses are moving. During a correction, you must remind yourself that you only want to trade in the direction of the impulses. And don't let the pullback scare you. This is your opportunity to get into the next impulse, even though it feels like the price is moving against you. During a trend, you may have several periods of choppy price action as the price consolidates. This is normal and you must still trust the trend. When the choppy price action persists for a longer period, it's better not to initiate new positions within that choppy area. Sit back and either wait for a better entry outside the choppy price action or let the price begin to trend again before placing orders. Before placing a trade, it's important to identify key resistance and support lines or supply and demand areas. Support levels or demand zones are areas at which the market had difficulties to break below, signaling that buyers may join the market again if the price falls to this key level. Resistance levels or supply areas are quite similar, only that they form to the upside and signal price levels at which the market had difficulties to break above. These key levels are like price magnets, the price is always moving towards them and this presents a trading opportunity for you. You should rely on key chart levels to spot areas of previous buying and selling pressure. This is done by using horizontal lines, trend lines, round numbers, Fibonacci retracements, pivot points, or even some indicators to provide dynamic support or resistance. Moving averages and view up are perfect for this. So try to time your entry around those areas because a good key level can turn the price. When price is near a key level, you'll have to trade scenarios, a key level bounce or a key level breakout. Very often, you'll find the price bouncing off the key levels. The price would approach a key level serving as a resistance for example, hit the level and bounce back in the direction it was initially coming from. Other times, you'll see price breaking through a key level and, in this case, you'll have a breakout trade. Nonetheless, regardless if you have a key bounce or a breakout, the lesson is simple. Trade the key level only within the dominant trend. A trade trigger is a specific set of conditions within a certain context that tell you now is the time to act. Look for bullish signals at support levels and bearish signals at resistance levels. 
This is the key to finding the best trades in any trading strategy. Let's assume the trend is down. The waves to the downside are bigger than the corrections higher. The trade trigger is what tells you exactly when and where to get short, given the context. Trade triggers could include a simple bounce from a key level, candlestick patterns, chart patterns breakouts, a confirmation from an indicator, or any other precise occurrence which doesn't happen that often. But when it does, it tells you it's time to get into a trade. In this case, we have an engulfing candle and a divergence from one indicator. And don't fall into the trap of overcomplicating the analysis by adding multiple conditions for an entry. Keep the analysis and the entry trigger clean and simple. The same goes for long trades. Watch for higher highs and higher lows as long as the corrections stay above the low of the prior corrections and price is approaching some important price level, watch for trade triggers. When a trade trigger occurs in the direction of the trend, you enter long. Here we have a double pin bar rejection, which shows bullish pressure in an uptrend at a support level. The entry point should be spelled out in a clear manner, so as to avoid any ambiguity whenever possible. And one important note, your preferred entry point may not always occur. As such, you may need a backup plan in the form of an alternative entry trigger. This alternative entry can get you into a viable trade setup when your preferred entry point doesn't occur. So it doesn't hurt to have a plan B in mind. Price movements aren't always what they appear. Beneath the surface of a move higher or lower, trends may be forming or turning into a reversal. While swings in trading volume may not be enough on their own to reveal changes in a trend, they can give you a sense of how much strength there is behind a move. Look for above average or increasing trading volume, which can signal that traders are truly committed to a price move. Observe here how the price and volume are both increasing. Below average or decreasing volume can signal a lack of enthusiasm. During uptrends and even in sideways markets, price will occasionally run into a resistance level. When price breaks through that level, the breakout is generally believed to be more significant if volume is high or above average. A breakout followed by low volume suggests enthusiasm for the move may be lacking. Volume confirmation is also important for the entry trigger, so you need to start learning the basics of volume spread analysis. Volume spread analysis looks at candles and the volume per candle to determine price direction. It looks at the quantity of volume per candle, the range spread, and the closing price. So you must learn the most common VSA patterns like the buying or selling climax, the no demand or no supply pattern, or the up thrust and the down thrust bar. This video will help you understand the VSA concepts. Don't make your trading decisions based on one single time frame. Try to employ a multiple time frame analysis to monitor a market under multiple time frame charts. You don't need to use three time frames just use two. You only need to be aware of the bigger picture. Usually, a higher time frame is used to identify the market context, while a lower time frame is used to spot ideal trading opportunities to enter the market. Thus, if there's a strong trend on a higher time frame, trading in the direction of that trend around the key level on the lower time frame will likely produce a higher probability of a winning trade. If one of the time frames is out of alignment, there is no trade. To focus on major support and resistance levels, you can find them on higher time frames before applying them to your trading time frame for analysis. For instance, you can note down the support and resistance levels from the daily chart, then plot them on the hourly one to find trading opportunities. This method keeps you focused on the important support and resistance levels. If you have conflicting information from higher timeframes, 
you might want to skip that trade. You must be aware of the risk you will take on each trade and the reward you will receive prior to the trade execution. This means knowing where to place your stops and your profit target. A trade should only be placed when the anticipated gain or reward from the trade matches or exceeds the risk being taken. Assessing the risk factor is easy. You basically determine the portion of capital to be risked on each trade. A fixed percentage of your capital, for example 1 or 2% per trade, is decent. Based on this percentage, you determine the invalidation point of the trade, the point at which your assumption has been proven wrong. This is the location to place your stop-loss order. Assessing the reward is more challenging. A common method is using the next key support or resistance area, the closest level that you believe it could possibly hold price, resulting, in the worst case, in a bounce of that level, threatening the viability of your trade. Very important, the distance from the entry point to the first support and resistance area must arrive at an optimal risk to reward ratio for your trade. If it doesn't offer, you don't want to take that trade. Sudden market news have the potential to invalidate the perfect trade. Some releases are more important than others. And while it's almost impossible to anticipate how the markets will react, you must know the times at which various countries release important economic releases, like interest rate decisions, GDP releases, unemployment and inflation announcements. Plan ahead by consulting an economic calendar which highlights major economic releases from the top trading nations. For example, if you spot an opportunity on the forex market, you find a decent trend price is near a key level, you have the entry trigger, the volume and the higher timeframes confirm the setup, the risk to reward ratio is optimal, but in the next hour there is a GDP release, it's better to wait until the numbers are out. Or if you are in an open position, you may want to consider how close the market is to your stop or profit target prior to the news release. You don't have to be in perfect harmony with the economic calendar of events, but it's important to be aware if there are events taking place each day. These releases are often catalysts for profitable market moves, but can also provide unseen resistance and false signals. The reason so many traders fail is because they are always trying to be in a trade. First of all, the best trades are the ones that jump right at you. After looking at the chart for just a moment, you know what to do if you are dealing with a good trade. Trading is often referred to as a business of pattern recognition, and a trader who has taken hundreds of trades knows the difference between a high probability setup and one that just doesn't look right. If you are unsure about the potential setup, it's usually better to pass on that particular trade. If you are nervous or stressed, or you don't have much time to trade and monitor the position, if you are tired or you lack concentration and you are not in the proper mindset to trade, it's better to avoid trading for that day. When you find a setup that meets all your criteria, when it feels good internally, if you feel good mentally, if you are not frustrated about your past results, then you can pull the trigger. If you found value and learned something new, leave us a like. This way we'll know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And check out our academy program if you want to further level up your trading. Until next time.